guys welcome back to my channel my name's Law and I make videos about travel living in Australia as a Brit on a working holiday visa and being a digital nomad if you're not already please do subscribe to my channel to see future content in all of these topics but today I thought I would do a sit down video which I've not done before and basically talk you through the process on how to move to Australia from the UK on a working holiday visa. One of my previous videos which was like more of a vlog style about moving to Australia kind of popped off a little bit so I had quite a few people send me questions on Instagram about moving to Australia and naturally they were just very nervous so as was i before i did it but honestly once you start doing it it's so much easier than you think it's going to be i thought i would do a video that just kind of takes you through like all the steps that you will need to do in order to make it happen just before we get started on the video though i do want to introduce this very fancy outfit that i'm wearing for this vlog which is the hoodie um i'm obviously wearing mine right now they very kindly sent me a style of my choice and to be honest we're officially in autumn slash winter in sydney now and i genuinely didn't realize how cold it got here i don't know what it is but i'm freezing cold every day so i have pretty much been living in my od since it arrived it's so warm and soft and i just know that like even when the weather does start getting nicer again this will be perfect for like camping trips and stuff like that so yeah i'm very excited as i said perfect for the cozy evenings cold nights so if you need an hoodie then definitely do invest in one they've got loads of different styles i went for the cool pizza slice style because i love pizza but yeah and they have given me a code which i'll put on the screen and i'll also link everything and put my code and all the details down in the description box if you use the code, then you'll be able to get $35 off your purchase. It's super soft, very cozy, and also cruelty free. So even better. So to crack on with today's video, um, anyone who knows me personally or has been following me on Instagram for a while will know that I have always dreamed about <clears throat> moving to Australia. Uh, it's always been a big bucket list item of mine and I've just never got here until I was 30. So yeah, after I visited for the first time last year, actually this time last year, I just was like, yeah, this, I need to make this happen now. Even though I've been dreaming about it since I was 18, as soon as I got here, I was like, yeah, this is, this is happening. So that was in March of last year and in September last year I finally made the move. I moved from uh, the UK, well I had been living out of a backpack for two years before that um, between Bali and Europe but I yeah essentially gave up everything and moved to Sydney. So obviously there's a lot to think about before you move countries because you're not just you know going there and backpacking or going on like an extended holiday somewhere like you essentially are wanting to set up roots get a job legally um earn money and uh, make friends all sorts of stuff so there's obviously loads of things that you have to get done like before you can do the fun stuff which is like make friends and all of that so yeah this video is going to talk you through like the practical steps so from getting a visa right through to like opening a bank account getting your tax number everything like that um and then if you want to see a second one which it will be more about like how to meet people where to find somewhere to live and things like that then i can do one just let me know in the comments i will say that the majority of this video is obviously New South Wales focused because I did move to Sydney. So although some of it will be applicable for the whole of Australia, there might be some things that are a little bit more state specific. So if you're planning on moving to Western Australia or Queensland, Victoria, anywhere else, just double check that some of the stuff is still applicable there, but most of it will be nationwide, hopefully. Okay, so these are things that you can do before 
you leave the UK. So obviously the first thing to do once you've decided that moving to Australia is on your agenda is to get your visa. So to do this, you literally just head to the Australian government website and for most people, you will be looking for the 417 subclass, which is the holiday uh, working holiday visa for UK passport holders. So once you're on the website, you just need to fill in like a pretty straightforward form it will kind of ask you a little bit about yourself, about your medical history, any criminal convictions. Also ask to confirm that you're under the age of 35, which is the cutoff for this type of visa. That's for UK passport holders, not for everyone. Um, and then yeah, just that you're in general good health. The terms of the visa do state that you also need to show proof of funds, which is 5,000 Australian dollars, which at the time that I applied was roughly £3,000. That's kind of like the ballpark aim figure that I was aiming for anyway. Um, so when you fill out your form to do this, you either need to like upload a screenshot of your bank account, um, which shows the funds, or what you can do if a lot of people will be applying for the visa like quite a few months in advance to when they're actually planning to come. So what you can do is actually just say to them, I'm still saving. And I've known people that have done this that haven't had any issues. Um, I think it's obviously quite common because, you know, some people will get the visa like 10 months in advance before they're actually planning to come to Australia. So once you've completed the form, you obviously will need to pay for the visa. This was around 500 Australian dollars, which for me worked out around 270 pounds. Obviously it depends on the exchange rate when you're doing it. So that's something to bear in mind and obviously make sure that you've got the money ready to pay for your visa. The website does say that your visa can take up to 90 days for approval so don't panic if it doesn't come through straight away mine did come through within five minutes which i was just so surprised about and also made me very excited because i could instantly just start getting excited and start planning things but yeah it can take a bit of time especially if there's an influx of people all applying so yeah don't worry and don't start worrying until it's past the 90 days, basically. So once your visa is approved, you then have 12 months from that date to enter Australia. And your visa will only begin on the day you enter Australia. So let's say, for example, your visa was approved on the 10th of May, 2024 this year. So you would have until the 10th of May, 2025 to actually enter Australia and start your visa. Say you entered on the 8th of May, 2025, that's the date in which your visa would start from. So your visa doesn't actually start until you've passed immigration and entered Australia. So once your visa's approved, now it's time to start a bit more of the fun stuff, um, which obviously includes booking your flight. So again, I always tend to book flights as far in advance as possible just to get the cheapest flights, especially when you're flying somewhere as far as Australia, because from what I've learned from personal experience, the longer you leave it, the higher the prices are. So yeah, once I had my visa approved, I pretty much booked my flight to Sydney like straight away. I had a ballpark date. I wasn't too precious. I just knew that September was like the month that I was gonna go. I always use Skyscanner to find my flights. When you haven't got a specific date, it's also really good to use their flexible date option. So just go to the Skyscanner website and then you can search for your departure airport, the arrival airport of your choice. And then if you are completely flexible on dates, which is likely the case if you're moving to another country because you don't really have any commitments, then you can just search for the entire month. So I searched for the entirety of September and then basically found the cheapest one-way flight that I could find, which was with like a semi-decent airline that didn't take me three days to get there. I, I think I paid like 400 pounds for my one-way flight, so I wasn't gonna complain. 
So the next thing to do, once you've done, I would say two of the biggest things, which is the visa and the flight, the next thing that I focused on was just saving as much money as I could, because obviously when you're moving to another country, you A, wanna have money to get yourself set up, but also you wanna have some emergency funds. And also, even when you're living in Australia, like you wanna have a bit of money behind you that you can just like dip into and go on trips and stuff if you want. So in terms of saving, I was pretty strict with what I was spending in the run-up to me leaving for Australia, which actually was kind of easy because like I was excited. So if I saw something in a shop that I liked, I'd be like, oh yeah, like it's 40 pounds, but that's like 80 Australian dollars that I could save for Sydney. So like I was kind of doing this like rough exchange in my head so that's kind of like the justification i was putting in my head i also because i have a revolut and a monzo account i also kept an eye on the exchange rate while i was in the lead up to leaving for australia because there were a few days where the exchange rate was really good to convert to dollars so what i did is i slowly drip fed my revolut with australian dollars on the days where the exchange rate was really good and i got slightly more for my money so that's a nice little tip if you haven't thought about that. But yeah, I didn't do any unnecessary spending. I didn't buy any clothes because in my head I was like, I don't even know what I'm gonna wear when I get to Australia because of the climate. So why would I buy clothes in the UK? I sold a load of stuff that I knew I wasn't gonna take with me and didn't need. And yeah, I just basically like cut back. I didn't drink as much. And overall I was just saving a lot more than normal. I will say when you first get here, it's very easy to overspend because you kind of, you you are in holiday mode for like the first couple of months. And obviously you're wanting to like make friends and socialize and stuff like that. So it is very easy to spend very quickly when you first get here. And you also obviously will need to like put a bond down on somewhere to live and just maybe buy a bed and stuff like that. So like things like that obviously will eat into your savings. So my best advice is just to maybe like set yourself up a little plan, start looking at places to live and what sort of thing it's gonna cost you, what sort of bonds you can expect to pay and then go from there and try and have like a target figure for when you leave the UK, bye. So aside from all the fun stuff like research and planning and just generally getting excited for your move to Australia, the final thing I would suggest to do just before you leave the UK is just some like pre-departure admin. So this is really boring stuff, but it's kind of important. And that it's just things like letting HMRC know that you're going abroad and you're then no longer going to be liable to pay tax in the UK. The same with your student finance. You can actually just let them know that you're not going to be living in the UK. You're not going to be a tax resident. And then what they'll do is they'll just pause your student loan repayments. What I'll do is I'll link everything, all the everything I've mentioned, all the websites I've mentioned, everything will be in the description box. So I'll include the links to HMRC and student finance down there as well for you. And Finally, what I would suggest doing before you leave is getting insurance. It's a really annoying thing to do. Like I hate buying insurance. The amount of years that I traveled without any kind of travel insurance for is actually quite shocking. For me now, because I'm a digital nomad and I work from my laptop, if my laptop broke or got stolen or I lost my luggage, I literally wouldn't be able to earn money. So that was my main reason for getting travel insurance. But you know, it also of course, uh, like covers you for medical, covers you for rental cars, like if you crash a rental car and things like that. Um, obviously, yeah, lost luggage, flight delay. So like it is handy to get it. And it's definitely the sensible thing to do. So I was sensible and I got a year long Australia and New Zealand travel insurance, which covers me for everything. There are a few vendors that do offer it specifically for working holiday visas. So I got mine from True Traveller and I think it cost me about 500 pounds. That was with like minimal excess. And as I said, covered me for like literally everything apart from extreme sports, I think. It's definitely just peace of mind having insurance, especially when you're moving to another country and especially when you don't know anyone in that country who can help you if anything goes wrong.
Okay, so now I'm going to talk you through what to do when you arrive in Australia. So you have landed down under, you're surrounded by Aussies, the sun is shining, but there's still a few fair bits of admin that you need to get sorted. Everything in Australia was very easy and I pretty much got everything sorted within the first 48 hours of being in Australia. So just, you know, land, try and beat the jet lag and then just get your to-do list checked off and then you can just start having fun and start living your best Aussie life. So this first one kind of overlaps with what you can do when you're still in the UK as well. I did it once I got here just because I actually didn't know that you could, despite all the research I did on Australia, I didn't realise that you could do this before you even left the UK and that is open an Australian bank account. Most people that I know that are here on a working holiday visa, myself included, go with Combank, which is just one of the biggest banks in Australia. It's called a Smart Access Everyday Account. If you're still in the UK, you can apply for this bank account up to two weeks before you leave. Fill in all the information online, I'll link it below. And then once you arrive in Australia, you basically just go to your chosen branch, verify your ID. You also have to give them your national insurance number and you pick up your bank card there and then. That's the quicker way to do it because they've already got your bank card waiting for you to come pick up. I did it the longer way, which wasn't that bad. So I went straight into a bank and did everything there and then. So I filled in the form, verified my ID and showed them my national insurance number. And they like set me up with an account straight away. The only thing with doing it this way is then obviously they need to post your card out to you. So I did have to wait two weeks for my debit card to arrive. But while I was there in the bank and getting my account opened, they did set up Apple Pay on my phone for me. So even though I didn't have a physical card, I could still start using my Australian account straight away just with Apple Pay instead. If you're obviously not sure about where you're gonna be living, then maybe the UK, like doing it when you're still in the UK is the better option for you because then you can just pick your card up from a bank. If not, if you prefer to wait and do it all when you arrive, you can get your debit card posted to, you know, like a friend's address or a hostel, a hotel, an Airbnb, wherever you're staying during your first like few weeks in Oz, you can get it posted there. So nice and easy. So there's not really an order of things to do. I've tried to like order it in the most logical way, but these two, the bank account and this one that I'm gonna talk you through next, you can, decide which which way around you want to do these um but i would say the next step is to get yourself an australian phone number and sim card again there's so many providers that you could choose you could go with like telstra vodafone optus even like audi mobile like literally anything obviously they vary in price and the other thing to consider is coverage coverage in australia can be a bit dicey especially if you leave the cities and go definitely into the outback um but also i've even been to some beaches up the coast from sydney where i've not had any signal while i've been at the beach so that is just something to bear in mind generally speaking people do say that telstra is the best for coverage across australia but there are still places where you won't even get telstra uh, coverage so there are just certain places that you're not going to get coverage no matter who you're with so if you want to go with one of the bigger providers like telstra or optus you can literally just go into any store in your city and just make sure you've got your id like your passport with you and they can get you all set up with a sim card and again like maybe just ask around or look online about the different rates and the different bundles that they can offer you Personally, I actually went with Felix Mobile just because I just saw it, saw it, thought it was really handy, saved me a trip into the city, and yeah, I could get set up instantly. So with Felix Mobile, it's all done through an app. So you just download the app on your phone, sign up, put your passport details in, and then you just get going. It's $40 a month, and that's for unlimited text, unlimited calls, unlimited data. And you can also add for $5 extra a month, 
international calls and texts as well. So if you wanted to really stay in touch with people at home, then that's a really cheap option um, to just be able to ring international numbers as well. I will say that it won't work unless you're already in Australia. So don't try and set it up before you've arrived. But yeah, it's done instantly. You can choose to either receive a physical SIM card or you can just opt for the eSIM, which is what I did. Um, it means you don't have to wait for anything. Your number's stuck up and running straight away. And like everything is done through the app. So you can, if you have any issues, they've got a live chat. Like I honestly just haven't had any problems with them. It's really good. It's really affordable. And I've got unlimited data. If you do want to use Felix, I have linked them below. This isn't sponsored. It's just a referral. They give it to everyone. So you can use my code and then you get $35 credit towards your first month's payment so that'll be nice and cheap when you're first arriving they do also have a deal on at the moment where if you sign up then your first three months are twenty dollars instead of forty dollars which is even better okay so the next thing that is super important to do is to get your tax file number this is probably the easiest thing that i did you basically will go to the relevant website for the tax file number which obviously i'll link below and fill in the form on their website website and there you go they just post you your tax file number you can again use like a hostel hotel like wherever you're staying basically or if you've got a friend that's got an address give them theirs and this essentially is a number that you give to your employer and it just makes sure that you get taxed the right amount and you don't get emergency taxed so it's definitely worth getting it in advance of like looking for jobs if you can't wait to receive it by post you can actually give them a call and they they apparently they'll tell it to you over the phone so yeah nice and easy and just means that yeah you're going to pay the right amount of tax and then the next thing to do is to set up your super so this is also linked to your job and essentially a super is a pension you have to have one you have to pay into one and Basically, then if you don't stay in Australia forever and you leave after your working holiday visa, you can claim it back. It's taxed quite a lot, I think. I think it's taxed at like 40%, but you're still getting a chunk of money back from the government. So why would you not? Again, there are loads of different providers for supers. I personally went with Virgin Money just because I'd heard of them before and they were really easy to use. I just filled in a form on the website, got my super number instantly and then when I got my first hospitality job, I just filled in a form, gave them my TFN, gave them my super, and they pay into it for you. You can log in at any time and check up what your balance is, but honestly, like, it just sits there until I'm gonna claim it back one day, so. So I'd say the most important final step to make sure that you get sorted, honestly, I would just get Medicare set up as soon as you can when you arrive. What you need to do is you need to go to the Medicare website and you need to download a form that you fill in electronically. And then you will need to email this form. It's essentially for a reciprocal health card slash Medicare enrollment. And you email it to mes at servicesaustralia.gov.au. Get your Medicare sorted because then again, it just gives you peace of mind if anything happens and you need any kind of medical assistance. Okay, so they are the main things that you need to do when you move to Australia, especially like the more urgent, instant, important things that you need to do. It sounds like a lot, but honestly, it's so easy. And I will basically link everything down in the description in the order that I've talked through so that you can essentially have a checklist and all the links will be there. Any discounts will be there and you can just check them off as and when. There are obviously other things you need to do as well, which will be convert your driving license to an Australian one, find somewhere to live, find a job, start making friends, all of that fun stuff. I can do a second video on those things if you want me to. Let me know if you found this one useful. Also remember, if you want to get your hands on one of these lovely, soft, warm hoodies, then head to my link and you can use my code to get $35 off. Hopefully you're excited about your move to Australia and everything goes smoothly for you. Let me know in the comments if you've enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more videos. 
And yeah, let me know if you want to see anything more or anything in particular about life in Australia. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you.